Okay, and welcome to the fourth chapter of Introduction to Programming. Now, before we start with our slides and talking about functions, let's first revisit the things we know up until now. Now, we know that uh, when we start using certain keywords, um, we can just use them like instance for integer. And this is in this case, the return type of a function main that doesn't take any parameters or arguments, and it has a certain body. Now, since this is returning something, we can also do this immediately. So it returns a zero at the end when the main function is done. And we also know that the main function is the function that is always executed when you start up this executable. Now, um, even more important, however, is that you're disciplined enough to always describe who is writing what and where in a particular file. Because later, in a few weeks, you won't know anymore what you've written in this especially since it has the very descriptive name test.cpp. So let's, just like in the exercise, say that we always want to know who is writing this and what ID number they, they might have and the description of what we're going to do. Now, today I'm going to see a little program that uh, will use everything we've seen up until now to determine whether a number is odd or even. There we go. Now, again, we want to interact with the user via the terminal. And up until now, we've seen just simple interactions by writing text to the terminal and receiving things from the user. Uh, from next week on, we'll do a little bit more um, exciting things with colors and uh, drawing, but uh, now we'll keep this very simple, and we have to, as it always, include IO stream for that. So we can start using the standard inputs. We can use the standard output to the terminal, and we can also add new lines uh, to whatever we do. Uh, to whatever we output to the line, for instance. So we're going to ask the user in this program to give us a number. We'll may take an integer, for instance, um, and let's just call it number. There we go. And we need to first ask the, uh, the user what number they would like to have. So we need to output something to the terminal stating give a number. We could even say give an integer because we are expecting an integer. And then we need to put this integer into our variable number. Now we could of course initialize number as well. Um, often we said that it's good to initialize things beforehand because you might not uh, go through all cases and then at the end or somewhere in the middle of your program this number could be anything if you don't initialize it properly to zero for instance. There we go. And now we want to see whether this number is odd or even. Now let's first um, go to the next line. So we've seen already that if you output n line, um, or if you put n line to C out, then it will go to the next line. And there we will basically say whether your number was odd or even. So we can say C out the number. We put a space in between here because whatever comes next, if we have a variable, will be immediately concatenated to our string. So it will say the number space and it will write out our number, and then we can say is, and then after this comes either odd or even. Now this is something that we need to check. Um, and for that we know that we could do an if test, for instance. Let's get rid of those unnecessary spaces there. So if, and then we need to test whether our number is odd or even. Now we've seen actually um, the modulo operator, which means that if there is a remainder from dividing it, then this model operator um, will return something. And we've seen also that if, the, if you divide a number by two, 
and there is no remainder, then we have an even number. So we can just say if that equals zero, to make it really clear what we want. We could of course just um, leave it like that and then we could use the true or false with false being zero and true being one, two or higher. But this is a little bit clearer, I think. Um, so we can say if um, we divide the number by two and nothing remains, then the number is even. So in that case, we can output even. There we go. We did not need to have those curly brackets, but I tend to not always know beforehand whether I will need them or not. So I've kind of optimized myself to already um, write those curly braces all the time. Um, and if this is not the case, if there is a remainder, if you divide number by two, then you can say the number is odd. There we go. And then afterwards, whether it's odd or even, you know, it's either this or this, so it will either output even or odd in any case, then we can again go for the next line to make sure that um, the prompt uh, is given back to the user properly, so it doesn't end up in the middle of the output. Good, so that we write down. And let's look at uh, whether it works as advertised. It's always possible that I made a mistake. So let's output that to tests. Then we execute tests. We have to give an integer, for instance, 124. And this is indeed even. If we give it another, whoops, if we give it 33, for instance, then it is odd. So let's now see what happens when you want to partition off a little bit of this code, because the main function is getting quite long. And often the first purpose of functions is that we want to uh, put things that belong together into one function, into one part also. So let's go and do this. So in this case, I would like to make our program a little bit more readable by doing all of this here at the end in one go and having a function that tells me whether something is odd or even. So we can here choose, we can say we want to have a function called odds. Uh, or perhaps is odds, is nicer name. And this returns a boolean, true, if the number that we're going to supply as a parameter is odds, and false if it's not odds, therefore even. Right, so now we define our function just like we define our main function. So instead of doing main, we have our function is odds. And in this case, our function needs to supply, it needs to be supplied with a parameter. And a parameter we basically can uh, identify here, we give it an integer for instance, and we call this uh, num to just make sure that this is just a number. And uh, we have to, whenever we decide on a function, we have to describe what our function does. So a function that returns true when the supplied para meter num is odd. Otherwise, it returns false. So that we later we can see exactly what the what the deal was. Okay. So since it returns a boolean, we have to return something. And what we return is actually already directly what the function will be about. Um, and we're going to test for this. So instead of testing over here with the if statement, we're going to put this exactly here. It's going to be a little bit different because here we can say if our num modulo 2 ends up with a 0, then we know that what we uh, get back is uh, even. So it's definitely not odds. So we have to return false. Else, as we've seen, we can use else, and I can put this over here with the right indentation, so it's clear what belongs to where, which block belongs to that. Oops. Otherwise, we don't return blue, uh, bool, we return true. There we go. So now we have a function called is odd, and as soon as we uh, put a number between brackets behind this function, 
we call this function with the parameter num and then it returns false or true depending on whether this is an odd or uh, an even number. So now we have to change just this into something a lot easier. So we say if is odd number then we say we return odd and otherwise we return even. This is exactly the same but it's a little bit more readable and that way we can create functions that make the main function shorter, more readable and our code in general more readable. That is one um, function of a function. So let's see if this works. So let's execute this into our executable tests. First compiling and then we execute it. So if we here are now having an integer that is odds, we get odds. If we get an integer that is even, we get even. So that is something we're going to see today.